job of an opposition leader is to criticize the government. We get that. But it's not to fear monger. Pierre Polyev has continued to promote austerity and cuts as the path forward for Canada and for Canadians. He is wrong. He is wrong when he says that investing in dental care for 1.6 million seniors across this country so far is inflationary. He is wrong when he says that the price on pollution that is both fighting climate change and putting more money in people's pockets is responsible for inflation. He is wrong when he suggests that building more infrastructure for childcare or accelerating the construction of homes across this country is inflationist. Indeed, experts and economists are almost unanimous on the fact that those kinds of investments are not inflationist. And we've seen inflation come down significantly. We need to continue to keep an eye on it. We need to continue to be responsible. But once again, Pierre Polyev is wrong, is not listening to experts and economists, and he's willing to hurt the things that Canadians rely on to get through these difficult times to pursue his ideologically plan, ideological plan uh, to cut services to Canadians. Next question. Uh, Sarah Levitt, CBC, if you could answer uh, dans les deux langues. Um, it's been six months now since uh, the Hamas attack in Israel. Uh, what do you say to the, to the families of the hostages that are still waiting for them to be returned? But at the same time, how has Canada's uh, position changed over the six months uh, in response to how Israel has responded to that attack? Well, first of all, Canada's position uh, has not changed that we need a two-state solution, a safe, secure, prosperous Israel alongside a safe, secure, prosperous Palestinian state. And everything that we are focused on, everything we are working on right now in support uh, for, uh, for vulnerable people in the region, in uh, driving to get those hostages released, in calling for a humanitarian ceasefire, in calling for more aid to come in quicker, is focused on creating that viable, long-term, peaceful future in the region. Obviously, the humanitarian costs of this crisis are, uh, are abominable, are horrific. The hurt on families is tremendous, and the pressure on those aid organizations, as we saw with the tragedy around uh, World Central Kitchen last week, continues to increase. We need to get more flow of aid and support for the humanitarian crisis into Gaza. We need to see a ceasefire in which Hamas lays down its arms and releases the hostages, these hostages that have been held now for six months since the terrible terrorist attack of October 7th. Canada has been working with partners. Our uh, Foreign Minister, Melanie Joly, has been deeply engaged across the region, uh, being there to try and create a path towards a ceasefire and ultimately a two-state solution with a free democratic Israel secure beside a free democratic Palestinian state. Uh, this is about the carbon tax. Six premiers have asked for a first minister's meeting with you. You have so far not committed to anything. What does that say to the discussions with premiers and federalism? I continued to have uh, robust discussions with all premiers over the past months. And I will remind people that we had a first minister's conference on the environment and on climate change within the first months of us taking office where we set out the framework for the pan-Canadian uh, fight against climate change. That's exactly what we did, and we created both a backstop mechanism that puts a price on pollution and puts more money in people's pockets, and the opportunity for provinces that wanted to create their own system to ensure pollution wasn't free to do exactly that. 
So any premier that doesn't want to be subject to the price on pollution can do like Quebec or like BC have done and bring in their own way of making sure that pollution isn't free. Now, the premiers um, continue to talk about stepping back in our fight against climate change and stepping back in the affordability measures that are putting hundreds of dollars every few months in the pockets of Canadian families. Canadian families, middle class and lower income families, get more money with the Canada carbon rebate, economists are clear on this, than they do without it. And it is a powerful tool representing about a third of our fight against climate change and our ability to reduce emissions. If the premiers want to propose individually or collectively another way of fighting climate change and supporting affordability for Canadians, I'm all ears. But right now, all we see is premiers misinforming Canadians and wanting to take away the Canada carbon rebate checks that are making a huge difference in people's lives. Question, question. The job of an opposition leader is to criticize the government. We get that. But it's not to fear monger. If you look at what economists are saying, if you look at what uh, responsible analysts are saying, they're pointing out that Canada has the lowest deficit numbers in the G7. The best debt to GDP ratio, the size of our debt as a, a report of the size of our economy in the G7. We're the third largest economy in the world with a triple A credit rating because the bond rating agencies internationally see that Canada has a responsible and fiscal plan. And we're doing that not just in spite of the fact, but because of the fact that we're investing responsibly in things that are going to create a better future, including a stronger economy into the future. Drawing in global investment. We've increased foreign direct investment by 60% over the past years because of the investments we're creating in creating a stronger workforce, better communities, more innovation, more science. That's because of decisions that this government has taken. We're investing in more spaces in childcare with infrastructure investment. We're investing in things like a national food program, which sounds like a uh, social policy, but also is a foundational economic policy because when kids can actually learn with full bellies, they are more successful through the rest of their lives and contribute more to the growth of this country. We're going to continue to step up and be there for Canadians in this challenging time at a time where the only answer the Conservatives have to offer is cuts to the programs and services that Canadians need and austerity in the federal budget. That's not how to grow an economy. That's not how to build a brighter future. We're going to stay focused on a budget and a plan that brings in fairness for every generation. Next question. Hello, Prime Minister. Uh, Sid Banerjee with the Canadian Press. Uh, today is the last uh, government-assisted flight leaving Haiti. Uh, I wondered if you could give an update on how that operation has unfolded and whether or not you're confident that you know, no one is being left behind by it. Uh, obviously, the situation in Haiti is extraordinarily difficult, which is why over the past couple of years, Canada has been deeply, deeply involved in supports for the Haitian National Police, in international diplomatic efforts to bring uh, democratic stability to Haiti. Uh, and we are being there for, we are there for vulnerable, uh, vulnerable Canadians who happen to be in Haiti. Uh, we started our evacuations a number of uh, weeks ago, uh, and we're going to continue uh, to make sure we're there to support people as best as possible and as necessary as possible. And I uh, believe there'll be announcements later today about uh, more things that we're going to do to recognize that uh, there's always more to do for Canadians in difficult situations uh, in Haiti and around the world. Uh, just a quick question about um, something you announced this morning about Canada's defense policy update that's coming tomorrow. You have been in announcing uh, investments the last, over the last week. I wonder if there's any money that's attached to this uh, announcement tomorrow from your uh, National Defence Minister. So you want me to make tomorrow's announcement today? <laughs> <laughs> Ever hopeful, aren't you? Ever hopeful. <laughs> Next question. Yes,